this morning. Somebody shout, it's a good day in the kingdom. Let me realize every day is a good day in the kingdom. When we're born again, it's all good in the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm going to start a new series today, something God put in my heart. And as I said earlier, Denise didn't have a clue what, what I was ministering on this morning. And uh, she got up and about preached all my stuff. So if I say something, uh, uh, just, just, uh, uh, just know that we got it from the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's God confirming some things. And how many realize that the Holy Spirit knows what we need to hear when we need to hear it? Now, it's easy to hear the stuff you want to hear. They ain't getting no help. It's easy to hear things that you want to hear. But how many realize the Holy Spirit, part of his assignment, of course, is to magnify Jesus. But the other aspect of his assignment or another aspect of his assignment is to help mature us and help to build us up into a place of maturity. Amen. How many realize that, you know, in the natural realm, uh, when you're a child, it's okay to have a pacifier. It's okay to wear diapers if you're a year old. Come on. But, but how many realize if you're 40 years old and you're still wearing a diaper and you still got a pacifier and you got to still be petted when you don't get your way? Come on, somebody. Come on. How many know there's something very abnormal about that? And so oftentimes the Lord and the Spirit of God will speak things into our life to challenge us. And I really believe that this word is probably going to be somewhat challenging to us. I, I think it, I know for me, and this is the way it works with me oftentimes, guys. When, when God puts a word in me or stirs a word up in me, oftentimes I got to walk through it. In other words, the Holy Ghost has to nail me and deal with me on some issues. And usually I feel like some of the, be some of the, some of the best messages that I, I communicate are those that I've communicated out of my own experience, out of what I've been through. Because it's one thing to talk about some, it's another thing to have been through it, then talk about it. You know what I mean. You know, if you're trying to minister to somebody that's been bound by drugs and you ain't never been bound by drugs, it's hard to relate to where that person's at. But when you were bound and Jesus delivered you and broke the chains of hell off for your life and liberated you and you run across somebody that's bound by something, you can say, listen, I used to be bound. But I'm free now because you have experimented or been through that experience of where God brought you out. And there are times in our lives God will bring us through things that are not just for us. Sometimes your issue is not just about God bringing you through or developing you or showing you something. Oftentimes God does something in us because he's setting us up to be a ministry to somebody else. That's why I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 1 tells us that we're to, that God comforts us in all of our afflictions that we may comfort others also. But it's never comfortable going through a difficult place. It's never comfortable going through a trial. It's never comfortable to our flesh and our natural man uh, to be put in a place that we are under stress or under pressure. But I'm here to tell you it is necessary to be put under pressure in order for the anointing to intensify on your life. I really believe that's a spiritual principle. To whom much is given, much is required. So if you feel like you got a call to the nations, get ready, honey. Some pressure coming your way. But the pressure is a good thing. You know, Jesus, before he went to Golgotha, he went to, to the garden, he went to the Mount of Olives, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, which is there in the Mount of Olives. And Gethsemane means oil press. Everybody say oil press. When I was in Israel in 2000, one of the things that we, 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 we toured different areas, and one of the areas we went to, they had an ancient oil press. And one of the things that, that I saw there, and it's always stuck with me at that oil press, it was hooned out of stone, and there was a, uh, it was like a big vat, and it had a hole in the vat, and it had a little channel that came out that the oil would drain out of, and they would fill the vat with oil, and they had this large boulder that they would lower down upon the olives. See, they didn't want to crush the olives because they wanted to be able to extract the seeds from the olive and plant new trees so they didn't want to damage the seeds so what they would do is allow the weight of the stone to just gradually put 
pressure on the olives. And as the pressure was placed upon the olives, the oil began to flow. And see, that's the way it is sometimes in our lives. But we're going to talk about a subject that I believe is challenging in some ways. And when we look at the end times, uh, Jesus warned of believers, and, he, and specifically believers, falling out of this thing. Uh, it, it, is, it is one of the characteristics of the end time. We know that the last days Jesus talked about there was going to be an apostasy. That means that there would be those that were once in the faith that depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. How many realize we're living in that day? We're living in a day and hour that they call evil good and good evil. Oh, come on, somebody. And people are so confused and people are so messed up, they don't even know which side is up and which side is down. But when we just go to the truth, which is the Bible, we discover what the truth is, and then we have a, 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 a launching pad, if you will. We have a point of reference that determines what's right and what's wrong. If you allow the culture, and I know I'm all over the board, but I'm just going to preach as it comes out, okay? But if you allow the culture to dictate what you believe, you're going to be messed up. I'm going to say that again to the camera. If you allow the culture and what culture believes to determine what you believe, you're going to be messed up. Because this world is gradually getting further and further away from God and the things of God. Used to be there were certain things and practices and means of behavior that were unacceptable in the body of Christ, but now it's acceptable. Well, I got a problem with that. God has not changed, and His Word has not changed. The culture is trying to preach a message to get people to back away from what God calls truth. God is truth, and in him there is no darkness. There is no lie. He is pure 100% truth, and his word dictates the truth of who he is. Can you say amen? All right, let me, let me try to get to my introduction. I'll tell you what I'm going to talk about. All right, well, I want to read the last part of this prophecy by... Kenneth Copeland, I encourage you to look this prophecy up. I believe it's very, 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 very detailed prophetic word about the hour we're living in. But this, this part right here is what I want you to hear. This is the only reason why people get saved, because I love them or I love you. This is the only reason you're healed and get healed, because I love you. This is the only reason you get blessed, because I love you. This is the only reason you have anything because I love you. I created heaven because I love you. I created the goodness of this earth because I love you, says the Lord. So walk in my love. Share my love. Do not allow strife of any kind to get into your house. Serve me, says the Lord, with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, and you will walk free of the curse of the law, says the Lord. Here's another part of that prophecy. But be very aware to be in my word. Stay in the word. Walk by faith. And whatever you do, stay in the love of God. Whatever you do, stay in the love of God. I want to talk to you this morning. Anybody ever watch Star Wars? You don't have to lie. Don't lie in church now. Yeah, okay. If you watch Star Wars, you, 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 you hear a phrase, and even if you haven't watched Star Wars, and I'm not a big Star Wars fan or anything. I mean, I, I've watched some of those, some parts of the movies, I think. I, I'm not a big Star Wars kind of guy, but there was a phrase in one of the movies that really caught my attention. And as you saw your attenders, guard, you're probably wondering, what in the world pastor going to preach on today? Because what's on the attender's guide is basically the subject is the force with you. But basically, basically the, the comment was made to one of the Star Wars movies, and, and then it was repeated thereafter, was may the force be with you. How many of you ever heard that? May the force. Give me some monitors up here, guys. I don't know if I'm loud in the house, but I haven't got anything on the platform. All right. uh, may the force be with you. I want to talk to you this morning, and I'm going to do a series on this because I believe this is one of the most critical things that we need to walk in in this hour because I believe we're living in the last. I'm not just talking about what's going on in our nation. I'm talking about what's going on in the world, what's going on, the spiritual atmosphere, all that's happening. This is one of the major things that we have to focus on. 
Because listen to me, you can have the ability to prophesy. You can have the ability to lay hands on people and see them miraculously healed. You can even raise the dead. But if you're not walking in this one thing, God says everything you do is fruitless. May the force be with you. I want to talk to you about the greatest force in the universe. What is that? It's love. That's what I told you she was all over my message. Love is the greatest force in the entire universe. Matter of fact, when God gave description of who he was, the word tells us God is what? Love. So in essence, love created everything that's seen because God is love. Everything's held together, how? By love, because God is love. God, listen, it's God that said, let there be light. God is what? Love. So love said, let there be light, and there was light. Everything that is sustained, it is sustained by the power and the greatest attribute of who God is, which is love. And as Denise shared, love, listen to me, I believe love is going to be put to the test because in the last days, Jesus said this, the love of many will wax cold. Now, he wasn't talking about unbelievers. Come on, y'all. He wasn't talking about unbelievers. He was talking about believers. He was talking about believers in him. He was talking about those that were born again. Even futuristic, those were born again filled with the Holy Spirit. He says, listen, there are many of them that are going to wax cold in love. Listen, I don't care what kind of gifts you have or what kind of ability or anointings upon your life. If you have love, your life is going to be fruitless. Ooh, getting quiet and tight in here. All right, watch this. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. You okay? Because, see, it's easy it's so easy, especially in our culture, to become self-centered. And it's all about me. Well, I ain't getting no help, but it's all about me. See, our culture does not understand what love really is. When we look at the majority, and thank God for the Christian movies that are coming out, but when we look at the majority of what Hollywood portrays as love, they don't have a clue. They think sex is love. I'm here to tell you, sex ain't love. It's a whole lot more than that. I know I ain't got no brother shouting in the house, but... <laughs> Help me here, Holy Ghost. But, listen to me, there's so many misconceptions of what love is. That's why we see so many couples that get married and end up in divorce. They don't understand this concept called love because they think love is about them getting their needs met. Let me tell you something, sister and brother. If you are married, there are going to be times that you feel like you're the only one giving and some of your needs are not going to be being met. There will be times in your relationships that there's going to be deficiencies. And if you base what we call this concept of love on you getting your needs met, you're going to be totally diseased and you'll be out of that relationship. Love is not about what you get. Love is about what you give. Come on, that was worth coming this morning and right there. That's why if you're entering into a relationship, you need to understand this concept of love. Jesus said this, No greater love hath a man than it lay down his life for his friends. Is the force with you? What force is that? It's the force of the love of God. It's the love of God flowing out of our lives. As Denise was up here doing our transition and sharing that word, the Lord spoke something else to me. You know, God's love, as the word says, has been shed abroad in our heart. But how many know through life you can allow things to dam up that love? And that love's not flowing out. It's in your heart maybe, but it's not flowing out of your life because of life situations you've been through, disappointments, discouragements, uh, people letting you down. L listen to me. In life, you're going to be let down. In life, you're going to be treated in, uh, 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 wrongly. In life, you're going to go through seasons that it doesn't look like you're on the good side of the thing. Listen, but I've understood this concept. If, if I stay in the love of God, God will walk me through it my attitude will stay right and the blessings of God will flow. Can you say amen? Let me, let me get to my scriptures where y'all know I, I preach. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Can we stand on our feet for this? this, this I actually want to read two different texts. And I promise you I'm going to keep it long today. Uh, 
Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Now, this is, this is kind of an expression that many believe Paul wrote the book of Romans. I believe that to be the case as well. Look here, Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Very, very, very famous chapter. Everybody probably can quote Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good for them that what? Love God and are called according to his purpose, right? All right, but look at this. Romans 8 and 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Well, how come it didn't say why? I mean, what? Why does the scripture say who? Rather than what? Because it starts going into some what, it's not some who's. What's this? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Can I tell you who the devil will try to attempt to? Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are all killed or killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's powerful right there. That lets me know that hell has nothing in its arsenal that can separate me from God's love. The only one that can separate me from the love of God is me. Hell can't do it. Don't, talk to, hey, don't tell me where the devil made me do it. Well, the devil done this. The devil done that. The devil ain't got no liberty to be up under your feet. We open the doors up sometimes and allow the enemy to express out of us some of the things Denise talked about rather than the love of God. But listen, it is us yielding to the enemy, but he has no power against a true spirit-filled believers, and he has no defense against the love of God. There ain't nothing he can do with somebody that is walking and staying in the love of God. No matter what he sins, they're going to keep on loving. No matter who he sends his attacks through, they're going to keep on blessing them that persecute them. They're going to love them that hate them. Can you say amen? Watch this. One other verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now abide faith. I mean, faith's a powerful thing. I mean, we look in the scriptures. I mean, faith, Jesus said, look, you have the faith of grain of mustard. You say that mountain be removed and cast the depths of the sea, and you doubt not in your heart, you'll have whatsoever you think you say. It's pretty powerful. Mountain be, you know, you know, glassy mountain be gone. You know, go over in the Atlantic Ocean. Come on, faith's a pretty powerful thing. Faith is the avenue of miracles. Faith is where, where the supernatural is manifested. Now abides faith, hope, and love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your presence this morning. I ask you, Holy Spirit of God, to let a fresh anointing be upon me. God, I pray right now, Father, that people will not look at me, but they'll look to you, Lord. That they'll not hear my voice, but hear your voice in my voice. God, may you speak through me. Father, without your anointing, I can do nothing. I ask you, God, to bless every pastor, every leader. God, I pray specifically over those in Legacy Network. Our network of church, bless every pastor, every leader that's ministering the word this morning. Bless the churches in this city, in this area, Father, in this city, this county, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father, for what you're going to do this morning. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I know I preached through the introduction. But watch this. What shall separate us from the love of God? Several things, and we're going to get in this series, not today, but we're going to get in this series practically what it means to walk in the love of God. But first of all, we've got to understand what love is and what love, what some of the fruits of walking in the love of God. Now, every one of us that are born again, we had an encounter with the love of God. If you got saved, you had an encounter with the love of God because you were not qualified based on your performance. To be a recipient of God's person, to be a recipient of his salvation. It's not of works lest any man should boast. It's by grace that we're saved. That grace is reflected through the love of God that when we couldn't reach to God, his love came and reached to us. What we could not do, God did by his own self. That's why Isaiah prophesied by my own arm. 
I have wrought salvation. Why? Because he sent Jesus on our behalf to demonstrate to you and I really how much God loves you. Listen, if you feel like I'm the most unloved person in the world, don't nobody love me, I want to correct that, and I want to pull down that lie right now. There is one that loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son to die on a cruel cross for your salvation so you could come into a relationship with this loving father. And he demonstrated that love through giving his own son. That's love. Listen, love is not an, a noun. It is a verb. And in our culture, we use this term so loosely. I love hamburgers. I love Olive Garden. Oh, I need to get away from that. I, I love my goldfish. <laughs> I love my new pocketbook. I, I love my 150th pair of shoes I just bought. I love my bass boat. Come on, somebody. I love my new watch. And I think in our culture, some of our verbiage has caused us to not completely understand what love is. We think love is something that just makes you feel good on the inside. Sometimes love don't feel good. I'm going to take a step further. Sometimes love hurts. You want to see the greatest demonstration of love? Glance back 2,000 years and look on Golgotha's hill and you'll see love in its greatest demonstration and display as Jesus was being crucified on a cross. Some of us in, in marriage relationship, I don't love him anymore. I don't love her anymore. You just don't have a revelation of love. What you're saying is I'm not serving them anymore. Oh, let me get away from that. That's for another Sunday. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. It is the attribute that qualified the disciples of the early church. One of the things that was said of them, behold how they love one another. They loved each other so much in the early church that if a person had two houses, they went ahead and sold one. It's getting quiet. Uh, I got a little bit of help right over here. but They sold one of the houses, and they brought the money to the apostles' feet, and the apostles distributed the money where everybody's needs was met, where everybody was being blessed, and everybody's needs were blessed. It was an expression of the love of God. Love is always a verb. It's not a noun. If you think it's a noun, you're going to miss it, my friend. Love is always displayed sacrificially. Love is giving. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. But, you know, it's easy to love people that you like. It's easy to love people and respond in love when they doing what you want them to do. It's easy to love little Johnny when he acting right. If your name's Johnny, I promise I'm not calling you out. It's easy to love when things are going a certain way. I'm convinced love is really tested when they're messing up. Come on, it's easy to love somebody when they're treating you right. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, you're working for a supervisor, you know, he likes you, and, you know, you done got a promotion, but, you know, something shifts in the company or something shifts, and, and, and he ain't talking to you no more. What in the world matter with him? He all jacked up. What's got on this bill? You have to intentionally stay in the love of God. Love is a choice. And it is a verb. And it's something that we have to continually guard our lives with. Because, see, the enemy understands if he can divide you, he can destroy you. A house divided, a kingdom divided, a nation divided will come to desolation. 
It's a spiritual principle we see in the Bible. Jesus himself taught it, that if you're divided, you're going to be destroyed. So that's why when you see division come, you need to understand the who, not the what. The enemy that's in behind the division. The enemy that wants to divide. Because if he can get you divided, he's going to destroy. Relationships have been destroyed because of the division. Because two people bowed up and both of them right. Sometimes you can be right and be wrong. <laughs> Sometimes we fight battles that have no spoils. Yeah, I'm going to prove I'm right. I'm going to prove I'm right. I'm going to prove my right. I'm going to let that super. I ain't backing up. I know I'm right. I'm right. I ain't backing up. And then when promotion time comes, the other brother gets the promotion. And you still over there being right. Oh, I helped somebody right there. I don't know who that was, but. <laughs> oh help me Holy Ghost watch this what can separate us from the love of God the greatest force in the universe is the love of God scriptures tell us he shed that love abroad in our hearts watch this several things that position us that the love of God positions us for and you can see it I think here in, in Romans chapter 8 it says that we're more than conquerors. When you look at the context, and oftentimes, and I know I have, and I'm sure many of you have, I quote the scripture, I'm more than a conqueror. I mean, you know how preachers, sometimes we get on them road, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm more than a conqueror. And we throw that out. But when you look at the context of the scriptures prior to the declaration that we're more than conquerors, and the scriptures after, he's all talking about the love of God. What can separate us from the love of God? And then right in the middle of it, you are more than a conqueror through him who loved you. And then height nor depth. And it goes right back into the love of God. I I'm convinced it's all connected together. That if you're going to be more than a conqueror, you've got to know how to walk in the love of God, how to stay in the love of God, how to love people that are unlovable, how to keep on loving in spite of what is going on around you. Because love is the most powerful force in the universe. Touch your neighbor and say, is the force with you? You know, in those Star Wars movies, the concept was that if Luke Skywalker had the force with him, he was in a position to overcome all the evil. If the force, may the force be with you. I submit to you as we're walking in the love of God and staying in the love of God the force of God's love will be with us and no enemy will be able to defeat us because the enemy has nothing in his arsenal nothing that he can use against the love of God it's the most powerful force that's why when we read about some of the history of some of the early apostles and how they died I mean, I look at the life of Peter, and Peter didn't want to be crucified like Jesus. He said, I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord. So they crucified him upside down. He wasn't bitter. Even when we see Jesus on the cross, as he's there on the cross and he has just few breath left in his being, one of the things that he declares out and speaks out is, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It was a demonstration of the unconditional love of God. The unconditional love of God is what will keep you in relationships. Because people ain't going to always do right. And you ain't going to always do right. <laughs> you ever heard of this term, every dog has his day? Every, <laughs> I don't want you to term dog. Every one of us has our day. How are we going to be more than conquerors? By walking in the love of God. Unforgiveness, bitterness, strife, envy, you can, get through, you can go through a whole list of things that have the potential to get into your spirit and get into your heart. And it's out of our heart that flows all the issues of life. If you run into people and they just mean and they harsh, they got stuff in them. And everything comes through that filter of the heart. And if there's bitterness and unforgiveness and hatred and all of that stuff that didn't just happen overnight it's stuff in people where they haven't dealt with issues and things that happened in their life and forgive other people there are people hanging on to grudges 30 years old hanging on to a grudge 
Because Uncle, Uncle Bob didn't give me that car. He gave it to one of the other nieces. And you still mad at Uncle Bob. Can I tell you something? Listen, Uncle Bob ain't hurt. You the one being hurt. Because you're allowing that to stay up in your spirit. Because the love of God's the greatest force in the universe. And the love of God is what keeps our heart right. If your heart's not right, your perspective's not going to be right. And listen, I've been in this thing long enough. I've seen people that flow in the gifts of the Spirit that, 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 that have great anointings on their life and you go back in a room and they rude and they mean and they hateful. I'm thinking, I don't care what kind of anointing they got on their life. I don't want to get it if they're going to act like that. We will not be judged by our gifts but by fruit. The greatest fruit Galatians chapter 5. I got her. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. When we go through that in the list of the fruits of the Spirit, God intentionally in His Word says the fruits of the Spirit are love. Then goes through the whole other aspects of the list. And most of them are reflection of love. How does faith work? The Bible says faith worketh by love. You know, love, joy. How does joy operate? It operates through love. I'm talking about real joy. I ain't talking about happiness. Happiness comes and goes. I'm happy now because I got a new car, but the car, I done been making payments on it six months and I ain't happy no more. <laughs> Come on now. But joy is not, is not reflected based on one's outer circumstances. I'm talking about the joy that God gave us. And I can prove to you in the Word of God, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, I can prove to you in the Word of God where love is directly connected with joy. When you're walking in the love of God, you're going to have joy. Does that mean everything's going to be good all the time? No, but you're going to have joy in the midst of it. You're going to make a decision, devil, you ain't stealing my joy. Because I understand joy is a reflection of the love. And I done made my mind up, I'm going to stay in love. I don't care if they talk about me. I don't care if they lie on me. I'm going to keep on loving them. I don't care what they do or say about me. I'm just going to keep on loving on them. Because you and I are the only ones responsible to keep ourselves in this thing called love. Touch your neighbor and say, is the force with you? All right, watch this. Love positions us to be more than conquerors. I said that. Here's another scripture. Gosh, I don't know if I can get into this. I ain't got but about 20 scriptures. Oh, I got three pages of scriptures here, y'all. Are y'all okay? Yes, it's a series. That's exactly right. All right, I'm just barely through the introduction. Here we go. All right, John chapter 15, watch this. Listen, guys, because this is so important. Because falling out of the love of God or the love of others is very subtle and, it, and you don't know it until you're out of it for a while. It's a very subtle thing because every one of us in life experiences get hurt. Every one of us have been hurt Every one of us been lied on by somebody. Every one of us have been mistreated. That, that's why you, you, you can't let the devil give you a victim mentality based on what you've been through. What you've been through does not qualify you, nor does it disqualify you for what God has in store for you. Matter of fact, when you look at people used, not only in the scriptures, but even in modern day times, you find people that were all messed up, but in, had an encounter with the love of God. Remember, Jesus walked into a room one day, and when he walked into a room, this woman came up with an alabaster box, broke that thing, and this aroma filled the house, and she began to anoint Jesus for his burial. And people were, people were being critical and people were being harsh and they were even judging Jesus and said, does he not know who this woman is? And Jesus just went on to say in another passage that I believe can parallel with that same text. And he said this, to whom who, he has been forgiven much, loves much. He who's forgiven little, loves little. I don't know about you, but I had a big pile of sin. And when the king said, you're forgiven, I am thankful. 
Of course, God can love anybody. There are those that, were, that, that, that walked through the teenage years and walked through the early years of their life and kept themselves and walked holy and godly. And I, I believe that's one of the greatest testimonies. You don't have to have no testimony to be an addict or a drunk to have a testimony. Amen. Watch this. John 15. I'm, I'm going to close right here. Y'all go ahead and stand up while I know I'll close. <laughs> Isn't it good to serve Jesus, y'all? Let me just love the Lord. Amen. Let me thank God for His love. I hadn't even begun to get into His love. I'll probably talk two or three weeks about His love. Because you'll never adequately love anybody else until you understand how He loves you. He loves us beyond what we can even comprehend. We'll try to get it. We'll try to, we'll try to exhaust it. We'll try to look at it. But I, I, I can tell you this. There's no way I can adequately. There's not words in the English language that can give us adequate understanding of really how much Father loves us. But we're going to try to grasp it. I, I do believe this. I believe the more you understand how much God loves you, the way you, that's going to that's determine how you see yourself and how you see others. But if you don't see His love and the way it's been demonstrated towards and how much He loves you, you're not going to be able to love yourself and you're not going to be able to love others. But watch this, John, John 15. Eight, and, and I'm not going to get into this, but I'm just going to read this and, and we'll, we'll, we'll jump off this next week, okay? But listen, John 15 and 8. Jesus speaking here. By this my Father is glorified. How many want to glorify the Father through your life? That you bear much fruit. You know that's the will of God for every believer. It's what Jesus said. He says he wants the Father to be glorified. And his will is for us to bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Verse 9. As the fathers love me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I've spoken into you that my joy may remain in you. See, if you're in love, His joy is going to remain in you. And that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another. As I've loved you. Greater love have no one than this than, a, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. I'm going to break this down next week. We're going to talk about greater expressions of the love of God. And then we're going to get in. How do we walk it out? How do we really live this out? How many want to walk in the love of Jesus? Well, the first step, the first step to walking in the love of Jesus, encountering the love of Jesus, it's more than coming to church. Matter of fact, you hug in here and do all of this, but if you all messed up on Monday morning, you ain't, you ain't in the love of Jesus. It's easy to love in here. Oh, come on, somebody. It's easy to love in here. I mean, the love that's in this congregation, the love that flows through this house, is amazing. It's a demonstration of God's love. But I want to ask you this question, my friend. Have you really encountered the love of God? Because if, you, if you've encountered the love of God, then you've been changed. That's why the Word tells us that Jesus said you must be born again. If any man is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man is being Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away all things become you have you encountered the love of God listen that love does not demand you change to embrace it but once you embrace it it will change you do you hear me that's powerful right now because a lot of people the devil playing with your mind saying well you know about this 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 you got to get this right you need to get that issue you know got this going on over here no 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 Jesus said this while we were yet sinners or the word says while we were yet sinners Christ died for us so you got to come just as you are with heads bowed all over this building we're going we're gonna to close right here in just a minute 
You're here this morning. You say, Pastor, I'm not real sure that I've been changed, that I've been born again, that I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm not real sure that I've received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm not real sure that I've had that encounter that changed me. Because when we look scripturally speaking, the Bible says God takes out one heart and puts another heart in. Takes out a heart of stone, puts in a heart of flesh. Is what the scriptures tell us. Maybe you've never encountered that and you say, well, Pastor, I got all these issues. I got all this stuff going on in my life and I really need to get this right, get that right. Listen, you can't get yourself fixed enough or right enough or righteous enough to approach a holy God. There's only one way. It's through the love of Jesus. That love that was demonstrated on the cross to deal with the sin. The sin issue that every one of us have. Every one of us have had that sin issue. You see, it's... This morning, Pastor, I know things aren't right. I want to make things right with God. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to lift your hand up all over this building. We're going to pray for you. And I believe you're going to have an encounter with the love of God. It's going to change your life forever. Say, Pastor, that's me. Here it is. One, two, three. Lift your hands up right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. See that hand. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? If you got your hand lifted up, I want you to come and stand with me. We're going to pray for you right now. Just slip on out. We're going to pray for you. And as they're coming, if you lifted your hand up, we're going to pray right now. Come on, y'all are going to be giving God a praise right now. Come on. Thank you. Just make a line right here. We're going to pray a prayer. If you lifted your hand up, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, young man. Thank you, sir. Come on, y'all are to rejoice with heaven right now, guys. This is what it's all about right here. This encountering the love of a God. Father loves you so much. Now listen, if you need to be down here, you need to slip on out and come, okay? If you're not sure about your relationship with the Lord. But if you're here and you say, Pastor, and I'm going to pray a general prayer on this because I believe it's going to apply to a lot of us. I mean, I had to deal with some stuff in my own life. As I said earlier, I find out, I find out sometimes God got to deal with you first so you can communicate something. Because it's almost hypocritical for you to challenge somebody else in something that you ain't got somewhat right. We're going to do a corporate prayer over that. I want you to just bow your heads with me one more time. And I'm going to ask this question for those in congregate. I'm going to ask you to come down. But I believe the Spirit of God's dealt with people all over this building. You say, Pastor, God's put his finger on some areas, maybe individuals, maybe the who's in my life that... I've been holding on to something. I, I, I've got hurt in my heart, and I know I need to let it go. I know, know I need to give it to Jesus. And There's some things in my life that I know I'm not walking in the love of God. The Spirit of God's dealing with me. If that's you, I want you to slip your hand up. It's all over this congregation. We're going to pray a corporate prayer. God sees. God sees his hands. Yes, God sees his hands. Anybody else? We're going to pray over you as we close. Now, I want everybody here to pray this with these folks that come forward. I want you to pray this out loud. Everybody in the auditorium, along with the people that come forward, I want you to pray this from your heart, okay? Just say it out loud. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you this day in full surrender, willing to embrace your love. That was demonstrated on the cross. You died for my sins. So I come today to receive your forgiveness. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. And I open up my heart for your unconditional love. Flood my life with your love. Thank you, Father, for accepting me based on what Jesus did. I am now accepted. I'm your child. And from this day forward, I will serve you. I will live for you. I'm all yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. You prayed that prayer from your heart. I want you to know God, according to his word, he washed all our sins away. Okay? It's a new day. It's a new beginning for each one of you. Okay? Don't allow the enemy to try to point to your yesterday. Because this is what the Word of God says. The Bible says that He has cast our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Never to be remembered again. So from this moment forward, your past as if it never was. In the eyes of God, it's washed in the blood of Jesus. You are His sons. You're His daughters. You're His children. 
Amen. You receive that? Amen. Can we give the Lord one more clap? Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. We're going to pray. I want to pray a closing prayer, okay? Let's do this. Father, we just thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your presence here. Lord, we know, Father, if we're all transparent, there's been times that we've all been challenged in this love and responding in love. It's not always easy. Our flesh wants to respond one way while our spirit wants to respond another. God, we've all missed the mark in this arena. But, Father, I thank you that I believe by your spirit, God, that you've convicted us, God. I believe you've pointed and you've directed and you've identified some areas, maybe even individuals or circumstances, Lord, where we allowed ourselves to slip back out of love and father right now we repent of that in Jesus name and I thank you Holy Spirit that that love that's been shed abroad in our hearts is going to be able to freely flow out of our lives we just declare every blockage every hindrance any hurt any unforgiveness any bitterness anything that's in us that would try to quench the flow of the love of God right now we rebuke it we denounce it and we say in Jesus name it has to go in Jesus name Father, we receive that in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. God bless you. We love you in the Lord. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. Say it like this. There is a name.